Hi guys, today we will talk about the top 5 reasons why the M1 Mac Mini is not for you in 2021. I've been using this M1 Mac Mini for more than 2 months now, so I have a good idea of the performance you should expect, as well as the issues that you should be aware of, which we will cover in this video. Before certain Apple fans come at me, relax, I already made a video about the top 5 reasons why the M1 Mac Mini is amazing and incredible. So please make sure to check that one in the description as well as the end screen cards. Let's get to it. Reason number one is the M1 native apps. Like I mentioned in my M1 MacBook Air video, there are around 370 native M1 apps. It's nothing compared to the number of Intel compatible programs out there. You can still run non-native apps using Rosetta 2. The problem with it is that their first launch can take a long time and they can behave weirdly and cause random freezing. Some apps might also seem like they are working at first glance, but they can crash if they rely on some low level API. For instance, if you are video editing using Final Cut or Premiere, there are a lot of plugins that are not compatible with the M1. Adobe apps, for example, are still in beta for native M1 support except Lightroom. So if you are a Creative Cloud user, you might want to wait it out. Keep in mind that the M1 Mac Mini is a first generation product and those tend to come with few issues and compromises. Reason number two, external displays and ports. Despite offering superior performance to Intel Macs, one of the major issues with the M1 Max is their limited external support for displays. On paper, the M1 Mac Mini can support the 6K Pro Display XDR, but that's about it. They can only support one external monitor at any given time. This is a weird limitation and one that's bound to be a major problem for power users. Thankfully, there are some, you know, not so simple workarounds to this limitation via which we can use up to six displays on M1 Mac Mini, but it requires software and other different hacks. Many users also complained about display resolution issues on the M1 Max. The problem mostly occurs when the M1 Mac was connected to ultra wide displays. It seems like the M1 Mac is yet to support certain specific display resolution. There's also less port selection than previous Mac minis. Notably, two less Thunderbolt 3 ports and no option for 10 gigabyte ethernet. Reason number three, connectivity issues. Now, before you tell me that macOS Big Sur 11.2 fix all the Bluetooth issues, just go and check Twitter and Reddit feed. Many users are still experiencing connectivity issues, and some users who did not have the issues before started reporting them. Me personally, I experienced connection drops with my Bluetooth speaker connected to my Mac Mini. I don't have the AirPod Max to test this, but a lot of users also experience connection drops. It's not very noticeable for me because I don't use my Mac Mini that often, but I can assume that it's going to be very annoying for a lot of people. Hopefully, Apple will fix the Bluetooth issues for all users. It's really going to suck if it's going to affect just a minority of those users. This is also a rare scenario where you, if you try to factory reset your Mac Mini, then it will break your device. In such case, you have to take it back to Apple. So be careful of that. Reason number four no eGPU support. So Macs with the new M1 chip will not work with external GPUs. That's particularly tricky constraint for the new Mac mini, which is already hamstrung by the memory ceiling. And furthermore, you cannot be used with powerful GPU chips and enclosure combos like the one from Blackmagic, as some have done in the past with the earlier Mac minis. I don't know why they did this, but you know, Apple has their own reasons. The RAM on the M1 models is not upgradable, it's integrated into the system on a ship, so you can, uh, cannot upgrade 8 gigabit model with another stick of RAM. You can only max it out to 16 gigabyte of the new unified memory. That may be disappointing for some professional users interested in switching over to the ARM-based Mac Mini. Considering that older Intel models can have as much as 32 gigabyte of RAM, that can be disappointing. Reason number five. The M1X or the M2 Space Gray might come soon. Why wasn't the M1 Mac Mini launched in Space Gray by Apple, if you ask? The reason is that this color has always been reserved for high-end versions, and in 2021, one will maybe come again. If there will be a brand different chassis style, I don't know. The truth is that in the new M1 Mac Mini, there is a lot of empty space that Apple can either remove with a smaller case, think of the Apple TV size, 
or fill it with extra hardware such as more Thunderbolt port and maybe improve the active cooling to help performance, especially if they have extra cores. Probably this new Mac mini will come with eGPU support since professionals and high-end users do need them for heavy workload. That's it for the five reasons the Mac mini M1 or the M1 Mac mini might not be for you. My full review and comparison with my Hackintosh and the MacBook Air M1 is coming soon. Don't forget to watch my previous video of the top five reasons why the Mac mini is amazing. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one.